Hey there. Uh, today we're going to learn how to find the volume of rectangular prisms and cubes. And when I say volume, I'm not talking about the volume of your television or the volume of your radio. Uh, I'm talking about the amount of space that is inside of a three-dimensional object. Uh, it's related to area. Um, if you remember to find the area of, let's say, a square, um, I need to know the length and I need to know the width in order to calculate the area. And the area is of a two-dimensional figure. And when I mean two-dimensional, I mean a flat figure. When I'm looking at volume, I'm looking at a three-dimensional figure. So, in other words, a figure that has depth or something that I could put now inside of that box. And the th it added a third measurement that we need to know. And the third measurement that's been added is height. So I could find these three measurements by finding any point that uh, lines meet on this rectangular prism. And I'll notice now that at any point, there are three lines that extend from all of the points. I have a line on this way going from this point. I could say that's the length. Um, if I went backwards, I could see, say that's the width. And then if I went up, I could say that's the height or how tall that object is. And in order to calculate the volume, remember we said the volume was how much space is inside of this three-dimensional object. Uh, I'm going to use a formula. And the formula is simply multiplying all three of those uh, measurements together. So my formula for volume is length times width times height. Let's take a look at an example. Um, on this example, uh, you'll notice there are no given um, measurements to us. We just have these little cubes that have been stacked in this um, rectangular prism uh, shape. And <clears throat> in order to find what the length, the width, and the height is, all I need to do is simply count those cubes. So I can go along the bottom row and I count one, two, three, four, five. So I could say the length is equal to five. Uh, if I went backwards, I see one, two, three, four cubes. So that would be four for my width. And then if I'm going up, starting from the bottom, I have one, two, three cubes going up. So I would say that my height is three. Now, this hasn't provided any units for us, so we'll just assign a unit for it. We'll say that we're working with inches. Okay, now in order to find the volume, I'm going to multiply the length times the width times the height. So volume equals five times four times three. And I'm going to want to multiply those separately. So I'll multiply four times three. That gives me 12. And I still need to multiply by five. So five times 12 gives me 60. Now 60 what? Well, we know that we were working with inches. So I would say 60 inches. But I really had three different inches that I multiplied together. I had the inches in the height, I had the inches in the width, and the inches in the length. And another way to represent inches times inches times inches is by using an exponent, inches to the third power. So I would say 60 inches to the third power. Another way that I could say that is 60 inches cubed or 60 cubic inches. And those cubic inches that I'm referring to are these little tiny cubes that are inside of our figure. So what that says is that inside of this prism, there are 60 of these one uh, cubic inch blocks that would give us our volume for that uh, figure. Let's try another example. Um, this time, they have given us the um, dimensions already. We don't have to count it. 
Um, and it doesn't really matter which one you say is the length, which one is the width, which, which one's the height, because it really depends on the perspective of the box, right? So if I was looking at the box this way, I would say that this is the height, right, going up three. But if I was looking at the box this way, I might say that this is the height, or um, depending on whatever way I had it turned. So it really doesn't matter which one of these is which, we're just going to multiply all of them. So I would say volume is equal to nine times six times three. And again, I'm gonna pull two to, together first, nine times six is 54. And I still need to multiply uh, by three. So 54 times three, three times four is 12, three times five is 15, plus one is 16. So I would say the volume for this figure is 162 centimeters cubed. In other words, there would be 162 little blocks that we could fit inside of this uh, figure. Let's take a look at another example. Um, in this example, you'll notice that the height, the width, and the length are all the same number. And when you have an object where the length, width, and height are all the same or equal to each other, you have actually a cube. So this is a perfect cube. We would still find the volume the same way by multiplying uh, those three together. So I would multiply 11 times 11 times 11. 11 times 11 I know is 121, but I still need to multiply that by the last 11 that we have. So one times one, one times two, one times one. Here's your placeholder, one times one, one times two, and one times one. And when I add those together, <clears throat> I come up with a total of 1,331 cubic inches. Uh, let's look at one more example, and in this example, um, we're going to see something a little different. So in this example, they don't give us a length and a width. Instead, they give us this B. And the B stands for base. It's the base of this rectangular object. In other words, the bottom of this rectangular object. They have already calculated what the length and the width were. So length times width has already been found for us. So therefore, we actually have another volume formula that we can use to find volume. We can say that volume is also equal to the base times the height. So again, the base has already been found for us. The length and the width have already been multiplied together to give us 90 feet squared. And now I just need to multiply by my height in order to get my volume. So volume is equal to 90 times 11. One times zero is zero, and one times nine is nine. One times zero is zero, and one times nine is nine. And when I add those together, I come up with 990 cubic 